Good day and welcome to Field 49 Jokkmokk. This uh, large airbase is a part of the Swedish BAS NITI system and represented essentially a new kind of thinking. Rather than to completely disperse the airframes uh, in anticipation of a nuclear strike, this was the foundation of the BAS 60 system. The BAS 90 system essentially took lessons from the Six Day War and the Israeli attack on the Egyptian Air Force. Here you still wanted to preserve the ability to mass air power quickly, but you still wanted it dispersed alongside the main runway and the system basically anticipated that the main runway would be hit and destroyed almost immediately in a conflict. So we are going to do one of the things that you do on Boss Nitti, which is taxi out. During this little training mission in peacetime conditions, my uh, goal here is basically to talk a little bit about the Kola Peninsula map, what I as a mission creator might do with it, and a little bit about the vegan campaign I have planned for the uh, for the near future. I am not going to be stupid enough to give you any sort of time frame as of this date, because the, the map was released yesterday. But I have a solid ID to work on, and part of my plans included Jokmok, which is currently kind of unfinished. You can use it, uh, but you can't actually let the AI take off or land at it, which kind of puts a damper into the entire immersion thing. Now I can plan, but I can plan around that, no problem. But I had kind of planned on not having to do that because. Right now, the player can take off just fine, the player can land just fine, but any AI aircraft would have to join up in the air. That's not how I want to do this. I want to be part, I want the player to take part in an actual, you know, operation. But we are now lined up. We will increase our speed, we'll set our course for straight ahead. And today's mission is a very, very simple one. We are going to head off the coast of Luleå. And we have a live fire exercise with the Robot Zero 4 against a civilian ship. That is moored outside the city. So, the first thing we are, are of course, going to do is... Let's see here. I think I checked gear. And uh, I got distracted there from my routine for a moment. So we are going to set our weapons to Enkel. And we are going to slow down a bit. Let's see here. So max select. And we are now going to take the very long trip down south to Ludium. As you can see, we are flying Ulle 09, and the reason we are flying this aircraft is because this is the airframe that Novel Air Simulations is built on. So, the fact that you are flying Ulle 09, uh, Ulle 09, for those of you who are not of the Swedish variety, uh, is basically a tribute to their extensive work in simulators and a little bit of a tribute to my friend Johan who is uh, responsible for a lot of the work on that particular project. If I had like 10% of his commitment to simulations I would have released many more campaigns already I, I assure you I don't know how the man does it. Anyway, so that is the reason why we are going to use this particular airframe and essentially the story in the first campaign is going to be that F-15 Söderhamn has been deployed further north during a uh, Schymningsläge 
as it was as it was essentially called back then. It wasn't really. It was essentially the dawn before the war kind of thing, but in essentially, as the term is used, it could be it could be used for a period of weeks or days. And essen what essentially happened during this time was that people started figuring something was up. Sweden might be mobilizing, and um, a war might break out. And Essentially, you will be flying your first missions from Yokmok, and uh, the Soviets will already have overrun basically most of Finland, and are heading our way. So, you will use dispersed strikes against basically any targets of opportunity you can find. So, you'll hit bridges, you'll hit Soviet ships trying to support their... Uh, efforts up here in the northern Baltic, you'll hit uh, troop convoys, and uh, you will do so without much help. There's not gonna be an umbrella of NATO aircraft for you to hide behind, that's going to be another campaign, honestly. And that campaign is essentially waiting for the Phantom to be done. And, uh, yeah, so... It's not going to be a. It's not going to be like you can rely on having an integrated strike package to help you out at a, at all times. Rather, you're going to be very much alone, and um, this is also going to be interspersed with the fact that you are. I'm not gonna say that you're gonna fly radio silent, of course, in. An actual conflict, the pilots would fly mostly radio silent and just group up and you uh, over the target and stuff like that. I have a pretty clear idea of how it would have been done in real life, but I also know that as a player, the realistic stuff might actually be kind of boring. So that is the problem I have with making these things and that is where do you draw the line between what is fun to do and what is engaged what is realistic so when realism and uh, fun matches there is no problem the I will do the utmost of my research on that regard but if I find that the realistic way of doing things is going to conflict with the player experience uh, then I will choose what is fun to do because at the end of the day this is a relaxation it may be a simulator but I be I believe in not as much the rule of cool because the rule of cool is pretty much the anti and the counterpart not really counterpart Never mind. Uh, I'm not running this off a script, so I'm basically flying and talking at the same time. So you'll have to forgive me if I forget my words at the time. But uh, they're not the rule of cool and realism, and rule of fun and realism are not necessarily mutually exclusive goals. But in when they are exclusive you are probably going to have to endure doing that what is fun and that is how my campaigns are going to be that's for example why i signed up the jf-17 to be part of a um, private military company either way we are coming up on lulio soon we are about four miles away from the breakpoint and uh, once we are at breakpoint 2, we are going to s go into attack mode and try to find a target on our radar. And we can actually turn on the radio radar right now, and we are going to have it on a... Let's see here, I think we're gonna... We w we'll want it at 30 at the very least. Uh, the radar picture over land is going to be tricky, 30 kilometers to Lulio. So, 
So essentially the first <coughs> campaign, as I have stated, is most likely going to be more of a... How people think about the Vigan when it's used in war. Like the strike from the forests kind of thing. And uh, the, the campaign after that is most likely going to be part of a larger NATO effort. And most likely based into Finland and with Finnish assistance and stuff like that. It's going to be most likely Sveafraps, which is early 2000 AJS operations. While the first campaign is going to be late 1980s and are going to simulate the AJ-37 experience in terms of weapons. Like you're not going to use the BK-90, you're not going to use the Robot Femton. You are going to use a lot of bombs, a lot of rockets and maybe some Mavericks if they can be spared from the fighting in the south. So, that is essentially what you can expect from uh, the first campaign. And in terms of the second campaign, like, you're gonna get all the advanced toys, you're gonna get NATO air cover, you're gonna get to be a part of a major operation. Yeah. That is essentially the mind I have, uh, the picture I have in my mind of what I wanna do with the COLA map. Because I want the COLA map to be developed. And if the COLA... I think we got a target right ahead, so we're going to go with attack, unf, and once we have a clear line of fire, we are going to launch on the objective. And uptogning. Biblio control, shooter, bruiser times two. The last, and all we have to do now is retrim the aircraft for the adjusted load, and we are going to uh, ha enjoy our results before we turn back to Jokmok. Yeah, there they are. Good hit, good hit. We got a fratricide with the first missile actually destroying the second one. But uh, otherwise we are pretty good. So we are going to switch back into the nav mode. And we are going to set, set us up for waypoint 4. But we got a solid hit on the target, so uh, we... And another thing I might actually mention at uh, this time is, of course, that the campaign is not going to be voice acted in Swedish. Neither campaign is going to be voice acted in Swedish. It is possible that the first campaign might be getting a release of a Swedish-only version down the line. But at this time, I plan on it being English because I want it to be accessible. And another thing I might add is also that almost all of the voice acting is going to be done by voice actors. Or rather, as the people I can draft for it. Uh, it's a mix of people who are actual voice actors, people who want to be voice actors, and people who just want to help out. Like, I keep my campaigns free of charge. Uh, I don't actually have any sort of ID to sell my campaigns, because I'm, te I'm terrible at selling my stuff. I, I actually failed working as a photographer, not due to my skill, which is actually pretty decent, but I just... I don't want to charge for bringing a fun experience to people. That's, for example, why I liked working with Heat Blur on the Red Flag campaign. But it's not going to be any. It's not going to be any costs involved with either of the campaigns I just mentioned. 
So, we now have a flight back to Yokmok. And if you pardon me, I'm actually might be inclined to speed that up a bit, or rather I would, if uh, my <laughs> my computer didn't just tank my performance doing so. Usually speeding up uh, speeding up the time frame is not a problem, but I think it's a problem when I'm recording like 2k at the same time. So we are going to just have to endure it and I'll try to find something to talk about in the meantime. Um, well, we can talk about the map. Uh, one thing I actually think should be feels a little off is actually the color palette. I think they can fix that. I think it's going to be absolutely better when they find the, a winter version because but even in the summer this looks far too much south to me this looks like something you might find in central in central europe and uh, the trees are all wrong uh, I get that they might just do the basic sort of trees for most of the map, but they are leaf trees and not the other kind, which is far more common up here. And while this doesn't really bother me all that much, it might bother other, other people, so I thought I'd mention that at the very least. Uh, the other thing is that the map is currently very sparsely populated. As I mentioned, Yokomok Airfield, which was actually stated to be usable, in but not entirely detailed, in uh, the early release. Well, it's not. And uh, I can't use the AI from it. So, there you have it. So, I am going to roll around. And we are going to have a look at what we got ahead of us, and then we're going to pl uh, plan out. The interesting thing about the Vigan is that flying in uh, this low in the Vigan is, is a breeze. It's easy. Uh, there are also parts of the map that feels a little bit unfinished, and that's... I, I can understand that. It's early access. But if there's something I have a little bit more of a problem with is that I don't know if they... I'm not gonna say that they released it against their will, but I'm actually... This is actually the most... One of the more unfinished maps we've got. And I don't really like that. Uh, I think that they might have decided to launch it now, because if they launch it in June, they're gonna have to uh, face off against Afghanistan map, they're gonna face off against the Chinook, stuff like that. But I'm also a little bit worried that this map is just going to be left by the wayside. I mean, if it's not selling well, then there's no... Then there's no... Uh, incentive for Orbix to keep working on it, which is, by the way, a big part of why I want to make campaigns and why I want to make compelling content for this map. I don't see this map being used all that much in terms of Cold War multiplayer, and I think Enigma has released a splendid video explaining why. If you haven't seen it, I wholeheartedly recommend it, but to sum it up very shortly, it essentially means there's too few airfields, uh, the amount of trees make it hard to make a front line, and he essentially, for him to make content, he wants to make sure that people who fly slower planes or planes with uh, less fuel, he basically wants them to be in on the action within a certain time frame. And he's right. I mean, he's right. So we're going to pull up a little bit, make sure that we do not hit any of the trees here.
but as a foundation for further work, either uh, basically 2000 up, uh, basically modern operations against Russia in the north, or basically any other kind of scenario that fits, the map works for that. The map doesn't really try to sell you on a specific era, so I'd say that it can work from anything from 1980 up until modern day. And that's part of the map's strength. Uh, everything basically looks splendid in that regard. And we are closing in on B4, meaning that we are going to have to start looking for the short runway of Jokmok. And uh, this is also going to be an interesting aspect of short runway operations, because you gonna, me as a mission creator is going to be partially responsible f for trying to lead in the aircraft to the correct position to start their uh, essentially land on the runway. So um, that is going to be one thing I'm going to experiment a lot with. And it's also going to be one part where the briefings are going to have to be specific, especially like Jokmok, where there are several short runways that you can choose from. And uh, if the AI is also landing, then they might actually pick other fields. Uh, or they might land in other areas. Or in some case, you might actually have to wait. Or you might be diverted because the area is currently under Russian attack. Stuff like that. I fully, I fully anticipate that in the campaign, there's going to be missions where you're either diverted... Or you are told basically to stay away until a Russian attack has been concluded. Because I can I can essentially assume that uh, the Russians wouldn't just hit the same airfield once and just call it a day. They would launch continuous strikes against it if they see that it's still being used as an active field. So, we have like 5 kilometers until we need to start steering into the short runway. We still have our radar on, but sadly the radar is not going to be that much effective in helping us find the gap in the forest that essentially shows us where the field is going to be. Yeah, uh, there we are. That should be the field we took off from. So we are going into the landing pattern, River Shotter, slowing down. I'll let you enjoy some external views of the Vigan for a while, while we try to get our plane into the pattern. Landings and landing patterns have never been my strong suit, so apologies for what you are about to see. It's also interesting to see exactly how much the entire base system just melts into the forest at this distance. Like, it's, it's actually kind of tricky to see. And... Uh, this is also going to be a bit of a problem. I thought about different solutions to it, like using flares or mocking it out with some other way, but most likely this is going to be one of those things where the player is going to have to uh, fend for themselves. So wheels down. This is not an optimal landing pattern in any, by any stretch of the imagination. And I think we might be a bit fast, but we have the reverser for that. And 
and the reverser is engaged. I don't think we broke anything, actually. Famous last words. And there we are, back at Yokomok. I fear looking at the external view, I think I punctured a tire or something. Yeah, so we're just gonna put our plane to the stop here. Oh, that's rich. Uh, so apparently Yokmok doesn't really work all that well. You can't... You don't seem to be able to park aircraft at it. But Yokmok ATC is actually online and basically telling us to taxi to the parking area. That was a little bit unexpected. Well, I hope they're gonna hotfix in this airport in then. If it's that finished, then they can just hotfix this, right? Please tell me they can hotfix this so I can start working. 